Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series on engineering drawing. Today, I'm going to be solving a problem from projection of solids with the help of the change of reference technique or what is popularly known as the auxiliary plane method. So let's see what the problem has in store. Here we go. It goes like this. A pentagonal pyramid base 25 mm side and axis 50 mm long. This in front of you is what is known as a pentagonal pyramid. All the base edges are 25 millimeters and the axis length from this center till we reach apex. Okay, this length has been given as 50 millimeters. Okay, so what's what are the conditions given? Has one of its triangular faces in the VP. So you can see clearly this pentagonal pyramid is having as many as five triangular faces and one of these is in contact with the vertical plane, something like this. Let's say this triangular face, okay? It's in contact with the vertical plane, something of this sort. Okay, let's read this further. And the edge of the base contained by that face makes an angle of 30 degrees with the HP. Now this triangular face, which is in contact with the vertical plane has a base edge and this base edge is going to make some sort of angle with the horizontal plane. Okay, how much is that? It's 30 degrees. So it's going to be something like this. Okay. If you extend this, it's going to make a certain angle 30 degrees with the HP. You can do it this way also. If you extend this again, it's going to make that same angle 30 degrees, same magnitude with the horizontal plane. So that was all about the conditions given in the problem. How to begin? All right. For any problem based on projection of solid, read this. Either you will be given the axis inclination or you will be given some other condition generator in HP or VP or triangular face in HP or VP. Okay. And as far as this problem is concerned, we have been given this condition triangular face in the VP. Let's say this one in the VP. So if triangular face is in the VP, our initial assumption will be to do this. We are going to assume that the entire solid is resting with its base on the VP itself. This is going to be our condition number one. And if you watch carefully, I have kept this edge perpendicular to the XY line. Why? Because this is that edge which is going to eventually in step number three make an angle of 30 degrees with the HP. Okay, so whichever edge is supposed to be inclined either with HP or VP in step three, it initially has to be kept perpendicular to the XY line. That's it. That's the concept with which we're going to be working. All right, so let's go ahead and make the front and the top views. Here it is. That's the front view. Okay. Five corners in the base, A, B, C, D, E with a dash and this apex, let's say represented by O since it's a front view, therefore O dash. Let's take a look at this from the top. And from here, I'm going to be making the axis. Okay. The length is 50 millimeters. And from the top, you're going to see these three slant edges. Okay. These three slant edges, something of this sort. So that was all about the initial front view and the initial top view. What's next? Now, the next thing is triangular face in the VP. So it's something like this. Let's say we have a vertical plane over here. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that this comes in absolute contact with the VP, something like this. Okay. Now, had this been a change of position method, what we would have done is we would have recreated this triangle, this uh, top view, in fact, over here, making sure that this ABO is sticking with this XY line. On doing that, you can conclude that uh, triangular face ABO is in contact with the VP. Okay. But here, nothing of that sort can be done. Why? The reason being very simple, we have to make use of an auxiliary plane. So listen to this very carefully. Instead of sticking this triangular face with the VP over here, what we'll do is we'll let it remain in this position only and I'll have an auxiliary vertical plane over here. And then we are going to look at that from over here so that we can have the auxiliary front view. Okay. So it's going to be something like this. Let me have all the lines produced from all these points, six points. In fact, perpendicular to the six one Y one line. And now what needs to be done is let me tell you, we are creating the auxiliary front view. And for that, this front view has to be taken as the reference. So what essentially we need to do is we need to take arcs of all these points with respect to X, Y, and we have to put them up over here with respect to X, one, Y, one. 
let's say we want to locate point A. So point A is going to lie somewhere here. Point E and C will lie somewhere here. D will lie here in this line, somewhere along this line. And O will lie somewhere along this line. All right, let's say we want to have point A dash. Keep one leg of your compass here, the leg at A dash, and with this as the center, cut an arc, and that's going to be point A dash. That's simple. Let's say we want to locate point P dash. Keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here at P dash with that much amount as the radii and with again this as the center cut an arc and that's going to be point B dash. Let's go ahead. Let's say we want to locate point C dash. Again, do the same stuff. Take the radii of C dash with respect to XY. So keep one leg at C dash, other leg over here with that much amount as the radii and with this as the center cut an arc that's going to be point C dash. You can do the same drill for the remaining points and this is exactly what you're going to get. Now guys, let's try to work out all the edges which are directly visible. And when we see from here, this OD slant edge is directly visible. Okay, so it can be made with the help of a solid dark line. And this over here looks like a line, but it's not a line. It's a pentagon over here. Okay, so you're going to see a squeezed up pentagon over here. That pentagon will be visible. So this pentagon has to be made with the help of a dark solid line. Apart from this, that, this OD also will be dark, this OE and OC, both of them, OE and OC will be dark. That means two triangular faces can be seen, okay, although their apparent views will be available. So something of this sort can be seen. So the stuff which is not visible, the edges which are not visible, these are there, okay. So that's ultimately the auxiliary front view. And now in the final step, we have to go for edge inclination and you can clearly see that this triangular face O dash A dash B dash is in contact with the VP okay and this A dash B dash has to be kept at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to HP. So instead of repositioning this at an angle of 30 degrees with the HP what we'll do is we'll have an auxiliary inclined plane now. Now let me tell you something in the environment of auxiliary planes HP is referred to as auxiliary inclined plane and VP is referred to as in a very crude way VP is referred to as an auxiliary vertical plane. All right. Now, since um, it has to be kept at an angle of 30 degrees with the HP, what we'll do is instead of repositioning this, we'll have an auxiliary inclined plane making an angle of 30 degrees with respect to this A dash B dash H. Okay. Now, we have to look at this from over here. Right. Let me make the project lines something of this sort perpendicular to X2, Y2. Okay. Now, the next step is very interesting. So what essentially we are doing is we are trying to create the top view in an auxiliary inclined plane top view is made and in an auxiliary vertical plane front view is made or an auxiliary front view is made. Okay, let us focus on this auxiliary top view. All right. For creating this top view, the top view before this one has to be taken as the reference. Top view before this one is this. Okay. All right. So what needs to be done is you have to take the reference of all these points with respect to x1, y1 and you have to put them up over here with respect to x2, y2. Let's say we want to locate point A. So point A, point A's distance from x1, y1 is how much? It's zero. So point A will be somewhere here. That's point A. Let's say we want to have point B. So point B's distance from x1, y1 is how much? It's again zero. So point B will be lying somewhere here. That's point B. Let's say we want to locate point C. So the distance of point C from X1, Y1 is this much, this much. So keep one leg over here, one leg of your compass in fact, over here, other leg over here, with that much amount as the radii, okay? And with, where are we going? Where are we going? Here, here. And with this as the center, cut an arc, that's gonna be point C. You can mark the remaining points, it's pretty easy, D, E, and that's gonna be finally point O. All right, now when you watch this, from over here, what are you going to see? This pentagon will be clearly visible. So let's talk on that. This line or this slant edge from B dash to O dash, okay, from B dash to O dash, from B to O will also be visible. And from C to O will also be visible. That's it. And the edges which are not visible, have to be given some respect in the form of hidden line. So that essentially is the auxiliary top view. <sighs>
so guys that was all from my side for today if you've got any doubt or query do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing or engineering graphics then do share and like this video subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever i upload a new video you get a notification you get an update anyways i'm gonna be back with more such videos on drawing and mechanics both until then it's a wrap this is manas patnaik signing off take care have a great day and keep learning keep drawing